Well, it's a very warm welcome and thank you for joining me on this independent off-tube studio commentary. The game at Bloomfield Road has just got underway. A second from bottom uh, Blackpool take on uh, top of the league Burnley. It's going to be a long afternoon, you would imagine, for uh, Mick McCarthy's side as Burnley straight away trying to get on the attack down the right-hand side. A long ball played up towards Nathan Teller. Holds it up and leaves it here for Connor Roberts. He gets towards the edge of the area and thinks about a shot, a shot that he does take in the end. It deflects up in the air after a block from a Callum Connolly. And then a quick ball down the uh, right-hand side from Josh Cullen. Doesn't, uh, isn't kept in play there by uh, Teller, so it is out for a throw to uh, Blackpool down the uh, left-hand side. From Mick McCarthy's side, what they're going to have to try and do is to try and stifle what Burnley are going to do. But Vincent Company's side really have swept away almost everybody this season. Although Blackpool have gone five games unbeaten at home, so they'll try and build on that certainly uh, this afternoon. As a uh, quick ball now from uh, Connolly over towards the uh, right-hand side. A chance to try and play a ball in towards Lawrence Gabriel. But uh, the home side just quite happy to sit in possession around about the uh, halfway line. It's Chris Maxwell in goal for uh, Blackpool. Back four of Jordan Lawrence Gabriel, Curtis Nelson, Jordan Thornley and uh, Dominic Thompson. Josh Bowler, Callum Connolly, uh, Kenny Dougal, Sonny Carey and Luke Garbutt make up the midfield with uh, Jerry Yates as the front man for Burnley. It is Arjunet Samuric in goal with a uh, back four of uh, Vitinho, uh, Halimar Ekdal, Jordan uh, Beyer and uh, Connor Roberts. The uh, two older midfielders are Josh Brownhill and Josh Cullen with uh, Nathan Teller, Johan Goodmanson and Anas uh, Zahri as the uh, three playing just behind uh, Ashley Barnes. It is uh, Burnley in possession. In their uh, change uh, black strip today, Goodmanson going over towards the uh, left-hand side now, Zahari. And uh, he goes back towards uh, Bayer. Square now towards uh, Ekdal. I'm uh, Paul Shabakovic, delighted to be with you for this uh, off-tube studio commentary. Plenty of other action on our uh, service this afternoon. All the uh, Premier League games uh, are available this uh, afternoon as well, with uh, Arsenal taking on Bournemouth, Villa against Palace, Brighton against West Ham, Chelsea against Leeds and Wolves against Spurs. Just looking across at the uh, Championship, no uh, early goals to tell you of in the 3 o'clock kickoffs. Just to remind you of the uh, two earlier games today, Blackburn did end up beating Sheffield United by a goal to nil, and uh, Cardiff will actually finish the game with 10 men uh, did end up uh, winning a uh, t winning 2-0 against uh, Bristol City in that uh, local derby as they have that the, the uh, Seven Bridge derby it's uh, back on the halfway line here now with uh, Burnley in possession Bayer over towards uh, Ekdal under pressure going back towards Muric who's come a long way out from his goal here and then plays a uh, long ball down the uh, right hand side it's headed away by Thompson back into midfield here for uh, Roberts Roberts into uh, Cullen Straight away, three minutes on the clock. <clears throat> you can tell straight away that it's uh, Burnley that are going to be doing all the uh, early uh, pressure here, all the early possession. Blackpool have to try and find a way of soaking up that pressure and then uh, try to uh, push forward whenever they can. But it doesn't look like it's going to be easy. Burnley now over on the uh, right-hand side here once again with uh, Roberts. Blackpool, to their credit, are trying to play a high offside here just to try and make it a little bit more difficult uh, for Burnley uh, to get uh, closer to their uh, penalty area. Ball now played back towards uh, the edge of the box here with uh, Muric. Trying to uh, look up and find a long ball out towards the uh, left-hand side. Zahari then going back in towards Brownhill. And here is uh, Roberts now. Under a bit of pressure just uh, having to uh, look up and uh, find a teammate here down the right-hand side. It's uh, Nathan Teller. Such a difficult player this uh, season, Nathan Teller. A lot of defence that have found it very difficult to live with him. He goes across over towards the left-hand side, uh, Vitinho. Now into uh, Zarari. Trying to get a ball into the box. That one is cleared. There should be a free kick to uh, Blackpool there. Certainly, it looks as though Kenny Dougal was expecting that. But Tom Bramwell, our referee, is uh, not interested. And uh, Burnley now back in possession down the right-hand side. Here is uh, Teller in towards uh, Brownhill. Back to Roberts on the halfway line. And then it's uh, with uh, Ekdal who's trying a long ball over the top. It wasn't a bad idea. Goodmanson with the thumb up there for the idea. Just a little bit too much pace on that in the end uh, from Ekdal. But uh, Goodmanson certainly trying to uh, get behind that. It's one of the few players in this uh, starting eleven for Burnley that has survived the uh, Vincent Company uh, takeover, if you like, of the, uh, of the team. Goodmanson. And uh, Barnes and Brownhill, pretty much the only uh, regulars. I suppose Roberts was in the team last season as well, wasn't he? But uh, certainly when you look at that team compared to the team that went down from the uh, Premier League last season, there have been uh, wholesale changes here for Vincent Company. And I suppose they had to be, of course, after such a long era of uh, Sean Dyche uh, being in charge. The uh, style of play 
Burnley far more expansive this season. They're trying to push forward now as uh, Goodmanson's pass is blocked off. Brownhill trying to win that one back here. But here's Kenny Dougal now for Blackpool. Over towards the right-hand side. And Bowler should be able to keep this in play. Blackpool on the attack now. Bowler getting to the edge of the area. Perhaps taking a little bit too long with the cross. The cross does come in. Murich comes out and makes a save. Then he hits the deck. I, mean, I think uh, Blackpool were trying to suggest that maybe the goalkeeper had actually dropped it. Maybe they were due a corner in the end. And neither has been awarded by the referee. But this is the first time we've seen Blackpool looking dangerous. It was a ball over towards the uh, uh, Blackpool right, which was missed by Vitinho, and that allowed Cullen to get in. That allowed uh, uh, Bolo, I should say, to get into the uh, penalty area. I think he just took one touch too many there. As he cut that one back, Vitinho comes back and gets a challenge in. And uh, I think you'd have to argue that Murich had uh, both hands on the ball. He was just uh, pushed off it there by uh, the uh, Blackpool uh, forward Jerry Yates. Play back now to a Murich who is being closed down. Just plays a, a quick ball over towards the uh, right-hand side. Chance now for uh, Roberts to get forward. And uh, he looks up here. Connor Roberts just decides to on a uh, short ball down the uh, right-hand side. Teller back into Roberts. Pushing forward here is uh, Josh Brownhill. And again, he was having to uh, check his run. Just go back towards the uh, halfway line. Some early goals to tell you about in the uh, Premier League. Bournemouth have taken an early lead away at Arsenal through uh, Phil Billing in the, inside the first minute there. And uh, Palace have got an early lead against uh, Villa, although they did have until a few seconds ago when confirmation uh, VAR had ruled that one out for offside. As far as the uh, championship is concerned, just looking across, we've just got the one early goal so far. It's Wigan Athletic nil, Birmingham City 1. And it's uh, Bakuna with the goal there for uh, Birmingham. It's uh, Blackpool struggling to get on the ball here early doors in this game as uh, here come Burnley again pushing forward down the left-hand side this time. Zari getting towards the edge of the area being blocked here by uh, Bowler. His cross into the box is cleared back into midfield. It's kept alive here now by Goodmanson and out for a uh, throw to uh, Burnley uh, down the uh, left-hand side. Yates having to come back and, and help in defence which in fairness I think he, he uh, Mick McCarthy was, uh, I think, geared up for that. Blackpool like to play with two up front, but uh, today they've pretty much got a five in midfield here with Dougal uh, sitting in that midfield as well, just to try and make it that little bit more difficult for Burnley wherever possible. A cross into the Blackpool box is quickly cleared back into midfield. It's kept alive on the le left-hand side here by Vitinho. And he goes back towards the uh, halfway line. It's Jordan Bayer, Belgian defender, up towards... Uh, the uh, on-rushing Josh Cullen, but that one's cleared back into midfield. Yates does really well, actually, to hold that one up for uh, Blackpool. Playing this back towards Carey, but Carey's robbed of it. And here come uh, Burnley now with Nathan Teller, but that's really good covering there. Uh, immediately getting back at him there was uh, Luke Garbutt winning the ball back for uh, Blackpool. They clear their lines, but Burnley comes straight back again here in midfield with uh, Cullen going square to uh, Roberts down the uh, right-hand side. Roberts now down towards Teller. To uh, Connor Roberts again. Options at the edge of the box here. Blackpool's just starting to sit a little bit deeper here now as Teller gets to the edge of the area. Taking on uh, uh, Dominic Thompson. Can't quite get away from Thompson. Goes back to Roberts. Roberts lifts across towards the back post. Barnes thought about an overhead kick then, but the ball just wouldn't quite sit up for him uh, like he wanted. And in the end, it's uh, Dougal that clears that as far as he can for uh, Blackpool uh, down the uh, left-hand side. And uh, the ball getting through towards... Uh, Kalmar Ekdal, nine minutes on the clock, goalless here uh, at uh, Bloomfield Road. No chances really to speak of uh, from uh, either side. But uh, Blackpool already having to soak up a lot of uh, early Burnley possession and Burnley win themselves a free kick here. Although uh, looking at uh, the reaction there of the uh, Blackpool def uh, midfielders, they're not too impressed with that decision. Sonny Carey, they're letting uh, the referee Tom Bramwell know what he thought of that. Ashley Barnes was the one who was uh, brought down. The uh, free kick in the end was given against uh, Kenny Dougal. And uh, the free kick has been taken short. Going back towards Ekdal. Square to uh, Connor Roberts. Four or five players ahead of Roberts here. If the Welsh international can pick one of them out. He does pick out uh, uh, Brownhill. And here is uh, Teller now down the uh, right-hand side. Great ball in from Teller. Oh, it just needs a touch. There is an offside, in fact. Wouldn't have counted. But that was a lovely idea there from Nathan Teller. It's one of those quick... 
zipping balls into the box along the deck that's almost a shot on target in itself just needs the slightest deflection from a teammate to go into the back of the net and wrong foot the goalkeeper that's what Ashley Barnes was trying to do but Barnes was in an offside position uh, when he went after that cross the flag went up straight away in fairness the, that uh, cross come shot from Teller was blocked by uh, Chris Maxwell but if the uh, loose ball if there wasn't an offside, then potentially Barnes could have uh, had the rebound into the back of the net. But here come Blackpool now down the uh, left-hand side. Or at least they try to. Garbutt running in towards uh, Connor Roberts. Ball goes out of play. Roberts already took the throw, but referee asking him to, asking for the throw to be taken again because it's actually been given as a uh, throw to the Tangerines here now. Dominic Thompson down the left-hand side looking for uh, Jerry Yates. Yates trying to get on the end of that one. It's uh, played out for another throw. Blackpool at least gaining a little bit of territory here. Long throw from uh, Thompson this time towards the edge of the penalty area. It's uh, played away from Dougal. And although he chased after it as, as quickly as he could, couldn't keep it in play. Neither could uh, Sonny Carey. So it is out for a throw to uh, Burnley now down the right-hand side. Long throw from uh, Connor Roberts in towards uh, Jordan Bayer. He's uh, pushing forward now. Uh, through the middle. It's a good run this from uh, Jordan Bayer. He's over the halfway line. Spots the uh, run of Nathan Teller who's not marked here down the right hand side. Teller heading towards the Blackpool penalty area. There's a wall of players in Tangerine in front of him but then he goes uh, back towards uh, Cullen. Now it's Vitinha down the left hand side. Zahri's ball in. It's a good ball. It's played across the six yard box. It's hooked up in the air. And uh, eventually Blackpool get it away from their own penalty area but uh, it's starting to get a little bit hot inside that Blackpool box now. A couple of uh, half chances now for Burnley and uh, once again Nathan Teller involved. He's looked uh, very lively since the start of this game. Ball now played back towards uh, Josh Cullen here in midfield. Spotting the uh, run of uh, Anna Cesarri down the uh, left-hand side. Just holding it up before he goes back in towards uh, Brownhill. Roberts now on the right-hand side being uh, closed down by Garber. And uh, played back in towards uh, Ekdal and Bayer. Very comfortable possession this uh, from Burnley. They're not sort of gaining a huge, a huge amount of territory with every move, but they're not trying to. The idea is just to try and uh, stifle where Blackpool puts uh, the home side under as much pressure as they can early on before uh, looking to try and uh, get that first goal, which really would put uh, Blackpool on the back foot. That's a bit of a poor clearance, though, from uh, Murich, the uh, Burnley keeper. Of course, uh, Vincent Company knows all about from their time together at Manchester City. Murich was a, a long-time a uh, reserve keeper at uh, Manchester City. There's the old duo there, Mick McCarthy and uh, Terry Connor. Deep in discussion there about what they could be doing to try and uh, help their players out on the pitch here. Seemed like a, a good move uh, from the Blackpool board to bring in Mick McCarthy. Just seems as though uh, Michael Appleton was struggling to, to get the results. And in fairness, Blackpool's uh, fortunes have turned a bit over the last uh, five or six games. Uh, just the fact that, as I say, they have been unbeaten at home in their last uh, five games, albeit one of those games was a cup win against uh, Forest, and three of those games unbeaten were draws. So it's only really one league win out of those five games unbeaten, but at least they are turning Bloomfield Road into a little bit more of a fortress. Here come uh, Burnley now, they're down the right-hand side with Teller, trying to switch play over towards Zauri on the left, but that one is blocked. Garber gets it away. Dougal gets the ball back to uh, Luke Garber, and suddenly uh, Blackpool have got men over here on the right-hand side. If they can use that ball over, and it's just a little bit over here. Still were uh, kept in play, though, by Bowler. And he's got uh, Lawrence Gable on the overlap. The cross coming in is charged down. Second ball is uh, picked up here on the uh, left for Burnley by uh, Bayer. He tries to clear his lines. It's out for a throw. But Blackpool just starting to get little nuggets here and there. Just starting to see a little bit more of the ball in midfield. See a couple of loose passes from Burnley. A couple of uh, loose clearances from Murich. And all of a sudden Blackpool are starting to feel... Although on that, on that occasion I think there was just a little bit too much from uh, Josh Bowler. Just uh, colliding there with uh, Jordan Bayer. Uh, the referee, with the assistance of his uh, linesman there who was flagging, giving uh, the free kick to Burnley, which actually Vincent Company's men will be quite happy about because Blackpool were starting to put just that little bit of pressure onto uh, Burnley. Here is uh, Hjalmar Ekdal now, Swedish uh, defender, bringing the ball forward. 14 minutes gone, unofficial independent off tube studio commentary. It is uh, Blackpool nil, Burnley nil with Roberts' ball towards Teller. Teller's ball towards the penalty area was cleared away before it found Goodmanson. He is Zarry now at the edge of the area. His shot is charged down. And uh, cleared back uh, towards the halfway line here. Murich comes out a long way from his penalty area, finds Connor Roberts down the right hand side, gets it in towards Teller. Teller back into Roberts. And uh, Roberts now just uh, looking for uh, options at the edge of the box. Teller's there with him. 
Good challenge there from Dougal. Ball now played back towards uh, the halfway line. But uh, the visitors still seeing a vast majority of possession. Ball now played uh, towards the uh, left hand side of his uh, Zauri. Getting into the box. That's a good challenge, though. It's a very good challenge there uh, from Connolly to play it up towards the halfway line. And suddenly there's a long ball over the top. They're looking for Jerry Yates. If Yates can take this down and uh, get away here from uh, Bayer, then all of a sudden there's a chance. Yates going for the curling effort. It doesn't curl as much. He's claiming that it should be a corner kick after a deflection. Uh, Yates is furious there that referee Tom Bramwell doesn't agree with him. And it's just out for a uh, goal kick. But uh, this is a great ball over the top. Looks like it was uh, Sonny Carey to pick out uh, Jerry Yates. And he uh, doesn't really get the curl on it, Yates. I don't think it gets a deflection. We'll see from the reverse angle. Does it hit Ekdal or Roberts? I don't think it does. I think Yates was uh, just being hopeful of a consolation of a, of a corner kick there because his curling effort from outside the box didn't quite have the curl on it to really test uh, Muric. But uh, once again, another little snippet there for, uh, for Blackpool. If Burnley don't capitalise on this uh, very positive start, then you just feel the home side buoyed on by the uh, the home crowd are starting to uh, going to start to get more and more into the game but that potentially could also be dangerous for Blackpool if they start sacrificing the odd additional player to go forward they could be caught out here by Burnley as uh, the visitors go forward now with Brownhill leaves the ball for Roberts right hand edge of the penalty area it's uh, with Josh Brownhill again back to uh, Connor Roberts four players in the box for him to try and uh, aim across that it's going to be back with Brownhill his cross is charged down by Thompson back to Connor Roberts Square now to uh, Ekdal. Over to Bayer. As you would expect with this uh, Vincent Company team. The two centre-backs very comfortable on the ball. Pushing forward almost like central midfielders. Nathan Teller now. Up towards uh, Brownhill. Back to Teller. Teller just stopped at the edge of the box though by uh, Sonny Carey. Although uh, Blackpool unable to uh, keep that ball in midfield. Burnley have it back straight away here now with uh, Ekdal. Goes uh, square over towards the uh, left-hand side here for Jordan Bayer. Now Josh Cullen. The two Joshes, they're making a good partnership there, I think, in uh, defensive midfield for uh, Burnley. Although uh, Brown, I say defensive midfield, Brown, who can play in any midfield position, really. We've already seen him in this game, pushing forward down the right a couple of times, as well as being in that more holding role. It looks as though Cullen's been the one who's uh, sitting in that holding role all the time. Barnes gets a long ball, and she tries to play first time towards Nathan Teller. He stopped, though, by uh, Callum Connolly, but straight away. This is a bad ball, though, from Dominic Thompson. He gives it away, and Burnley comes straight again here down the right with Josh Brownhill. There was a bit of a trip on Connor Roberts, referee giving uh, Burnley the advantage. Roberts' ball down the right-hand side to try and pick out Teller. Teller getting all the way to the byline. Can't uh, quite dance away, though, from uh, Luke Garbutt. And then Luke Garbutt's clearance turns out to be a good ball here for uh, Jerry Yates, who's uh, stopped in his tracks there by... Uh, uh, Ekdal, who then goes down at the edge of the area, and he's brought down, and that is a free kick in favour of Burnley. So uh, now you can see why uh, the Jerry Yates is, is going to let this one go. He feels as though he should have been awarded a free kick for what happened to him on the halfway line with Ekdal running into him. I'm not so sure there was too much in that, but then Dougal does pull on the uh, shirt of uh, Hjalmar Ekdal and uh, brings him down. So a uh, free kick to Burnley in a uh, decent position. Mick McCarthy... He's not prepared to let uh, this one go yet. Speaking with our uh, fourth official, who's uh, Sonny Gill this afternoon, our uh, fourth official. Just to tell you as well, another goal going in in the championship. It's uh, Hugh Gill giving uh, the lead for Rotherham against uh, Queen's Park Rangers. They're having a terrible run, aren't they, QPR? Uh, on to their uh, third manager after uh, Michael Beale left to go to uh, Glasgow Rangers. Then they had uh, former Blackpool man Neil Critchley in charge, but he had a terrible, terrible run now. It's uh, former player uh, Gareth Ainsworth now turning up at uh, QPR. I was quite surprised, actually. Just uh, going back to the action here at Bloomfield Road, Burnley took the free kick quickly and uh, well, say, it took it short, I should say. And then the ball was cleared back into midfield. A second ball coming in, and it's a header from uh, uh, Bayer in the end, which goes uh, over the bar. 19 minutes gone. Goalless here at Bloomfield Road. But the point I was making about QPR was that... Um, I was, on the one hand, not surprised that Ainsworth took the job at QPR because he has got a, a long history there of being a player. But when you think of how entrenched and sort of how embedded he was into that Wickham team, it's a big, big gamble. You almost feel as though Ainsworth knows in the back of his mind, maybe even, maybe even sort of unofficially, he knows that uh, potentially there is a route back to him, uh, to, uh, route back for him to Adams Park, uh, if it was to turn out so that things don't work out at uh, Loftus Road because oh, QPR aren't in relegation trouble yet if they carry on losing the amount of games they have done over the past uh, 
a couple of months. They could uh, find themselves getting closer to relegation. There is an offside against one of the Blackpool players. That would be very frustrating. The ball was barely on the halfway line. Already the flag goes up. Uh, it's always going to be uh, something that just uh, slows the game down even, which in, in many ways may actually benefit Blackpool here. Uh, they've uh, not started the game particularly well, but uh, as the game has gone on, they're just starting to uh, see a little bit more of the ball. See that McCarthy just uh, just trying to uh, get another message out to his players. Twenty minutes gone. I think if you'd have seen just the first five minutes, you would have thought that a goal for uh, uh, Burnley is uh, is only a matter of time. But now, as the game has has wore on, Blackpool are just starting to feel a little bit more confident. But they've got to be careful here. As here comes uh, Teller now down the right hand side. As his route to goal stopped by Thompson, exchanging a quick pass with uh, Roberts before it is Teller's ball into the box. Header away there by uh, Thornley. Back into midfield, back to uh, Nathan Teller. In fact, he goes uh, square uh, towards uh, Cullen. Back now towards uh, Josh Cullen. He's around 30 yards out. Gets that ball into Teller before it's uh, cleared back into midfield. But Burnley still keep possession here down the right-hand side. Bayer. Back to uh, Ekdal. Now Roberts back to Ekdal again, being closed down by Yates and uh, by uh, Callum Connolly. That's uh, Blackpool. This is the trouble, I think, but it's always a difficult balance, isn't it? You, you don't want to give your opposition a free ride, but when you've got a team like Burnley who are so good at keeping the ball, it's almost like, I don't want to say it's a waste of time to press because you have to press, but you've got to do it in a sort of measured way. You, you can't just charge after every single ball because eventually you are going to run out of steam and... Uh, to say, uh, Burnley have got uh, plenty of uh, strength and depth on that uh, bench as well. Looking at the two benches, uh, Blackpool's is Lions, Grimshaw, Husband, Patino, Rogers, Medine, and Hamilton on the bench uh, for uh, Blackpool this afternoon. As, uh, as far as the uh, Burnley bench uh, is concerned, it is uh, Twine, uh, Foster, Dervisoglu, Obafemi, Taylor, Cork, and uh, goalkeeper Peacock Farrell. That's the uh, bench for. Uh, Burnley this afternoon. This could be the commentator's curse. I've barely finished saying the words, the Burnley bench, and suddenly there's a problem here for uh, Burnley as uh, one of their players hits the deck. It looks like it's uh, Brownhill who's uh, just kept... He's, he's tried to keep the ball in play uh, around about the halfway line, just on the touchline, and he's lost his balance. And uh, just as he's uh, has tried to do that, it looks as though he's uh, jarred a knee there, potentially. We'll see again what's happened. He gets a pass here from Connor Roberts. Oh, it's he does this. He loses the, he loses his studs in the turf. The way he's just trying to keep his balance, and he oh, he jars, he jars that right foot there. That could be a painful one, for uh, for Josh Brownhill. I mean, ever the professional, he was on the ground in in severe pain, and yet he still managed to uh, to get the ball back to a uh, uh, to a teammate there just in case. But um, yeah, that that didn't look good from uh, from his point of view. And uh, let's hope that this isn't going to be anything uh, too serious for him. But uh, just seeing him uh, being checked over now. And it looks like he is uh, oh, he's, he's still in a lot of pain there. It's actually his, his left, uh, the, the, the two feet that jarred in the turf. It looks like it's his left leg that's giving him more problems. Vincent Company just using this moment to get to Jordan Bayer. His uh, fellow countryman across just to have a quick word with him. Camera now focusing on the uh, away end here at uh, Bloomfield Road. Uh, I can uh, say for myself, being an away fan at that ground uh, a few years ago in that temporary stand, just wondering if that's uh, been replaced now. But uh, certainly, well, Burnley will be hoping that uh, Josh Brown, who doesn't have to be replaced here right now, he's uh, on, on his feet, uh, trying to put a bit of weight through that uh, that left foot. But uh, you can tell that it's still causing him a lot of problems there, and uh, I wouldn't like to say too soon that he definitely can't play on, but it doesn't look for the moment like he's going to be able to. Just a quick look at uh, some of the other games. can tell you that uh, just in the last few seconds, Middlesbrough have taken the lead against uh, Reading. Uh, it's from the penalty spot. We'll just wait for confirmation on the uh, goal scorer there. Rotherham, as I said, they took the lead against uh, QPR, and that's through uh, Hugh Gill. And uh, Birmingham lead away at uh, Wigan after a Bakuna goal 
early on in that game. They're the only goals uh, in the championship so far in the 3 p.m. kickoffs. And in the earlier games, Blackburn beat Sheffield United by a goal to nil. And uh, Cardiff, who finished the game with 10 men, beat uh, Bristol City by a goal to nil. In the Premier League, in the early game, Man City beat Newcastle by two goals to nil. And in the 3 o'clock kickoffs, Arsenal still trail at home by a goal to nil against Bournemouth. It's uh, nil nil between uh, Villa and Palace. Brighton lead against West Ham by a goal. It's been a great season for Brighton. Alexis McAllister, World Cup winner, uh, scoring the uh, penalty there for uh, Brighton. Nil-nil between uh, Chelsea and Leeds. That's a huge game for both teams there, Chelsea and Leeds. Leeds could do with uh, three points, certainly to kickstart their uh, push to get away uh, from relegation. And uh, from uh, Chelsea's point of view, if Chelsea were to lose today, well, you'd imagine that Graham Potter could be on his way out. But it's not, not good news for uh, Josh Brownhill. That uh, injury has uh, caused him to now leave the field. Scott Twine is uh, now on to replace him. And, uh, yeah, a bit of a look, worried look on Vincent Company's face there because uh, certainly Brown, who has been a, an excellent player for, for Burnley this season. As I say, your, your archetypal midfielder, excellent uh, in terms of holding the ball up in the central midfield. He could go out on the wing, uh, gets, you, gets a few goals as well, plenty of energy. So the fact that he's had to go off... Uh, will certainly be a worry for this game and indeed going forward, depending on how serious uh, the injury could be. And it's just uh, taken the sting out of that um, very lively start that Burnley had in this game. So this is all, all little details that might just help Blackpool to get into the game a little bit more. Will be at uh, Mick McCarthy's side, still having to, uh, to chase the ball for uh, for long periods in this game. As uh, here come Burnley now, going through the middle with uh, Ekdal to uh, Roberts. Three uh, Blackpool players trying to put a bit of pressure there. Ball going back towards uh, Arjuna Muric. And now Ekdal again. Didn't want to play the long ball, although there was uh, plenty of uh, opportunity to try and perhaps uh, pick out Ashley Barnes and go over the top. But that's not the way Burnley play. They are trying to uh, build from the back wherever possible. Far better to have uh, an almost guarantee of possession in midfield than a long ball where there's uh, almost a 50-50 chance of losing it. That's certainly the uh, the ethos now under Vincent Company, and here is first. To well, I was about to say here's the first touch of the ball for Scott Twine, but the pass out to him from a uh, defence from Ekdal left a lot to be desired and a lot for uh, Twine to try and get on the end of that. It was uh, just a bit too quick for him, so it's a throw to Blackpool now down the left with uh, former Brentford man Dominic Thompson. Never really had a chance to uh, bed down properly at uh, well, I was what was. The uh, community stadium, it's the GTEC community stadium now in uh, West London there, Thompson. That's uh, certainly been a, a regular for Blackpool in that uh, left-back's uh, position this season. So from, from his point of view, I'm sure he'll be happy, although he's had to drop down a division. He's uh, at least getting regular football again. Ball down the uh, right-hand side now for a Blackpool. Throw-in taken by Jordan Lawrence. Gable doesn't quite get through towards Josh Bowler. Burnley are back in possession and a ball over the top. Thompson gets ahead on it, but it doesn't go out of play. He's still going to be kept in here by Nathan Teller. Plays the ball across the ground into the penalty area. It doesn't quite get through to Ashley Barnes. Second ball may be uh, recycled here by Connor Roberts. Finds Teller on the right-hand side. He drops the shoulder. Left-footed foot cross in this time. Headed away by Jordan Thornley. But uh, Burnley straight back into possession here in midfield. A Burnley player hits the deck just outside the box. I think it was Nathan Teller. I'm not sure if there was a foul or if he just uh, bumped into an opponent and hit the deck. But uh, here come Burnley now down the left with uh, Zauri. His ball into the box. Headed away by uh, Curtis Nelson. And uh, Blackpool in possession now with uh, Kenny Dougal playing a ball over the top. And Yates is chasing this one. He's been tracked here by Roberts and Ekdal, but uh, he actually gets there first. Leaves the ball now for Sonny Carey. Carey breaking into the box. He feels as though he might have been brought down inside the area, or just outside the area. Tom Bramwell, our referee, with that sort of wry smile. Oh, come on, don't don't expect me to, uh, to buy that sort of thing. Referee wasn't uh, buying it. And uh, in fairness, well, I'm not seeing a replay, but it didn't look to me as though there was much in that. And uh, Burnley back in possession now uh, in midfield here with uh, Connor Roberts over towards the uh, left hand side a ball a long ball now over towards the right looking uh, for a uh, twine Thompson has uh, bundled straight into him there but no free kick and now it's uh, paid up to Yates on the halfway line he cuts a lonely figure there the uh, Blackpool number nine I think uh, Medine is on the bench today I think the thinking behind that was that maybe perhaps it's just a bit more pace about Yates so if you're going to have one man up front you need someone who's going to do a lot of uh, pressing and Medine's more your sort of uh, traditional target man really as a ball now down the left here played towards Anna Sauri his uh, cross is charged down and deflects out for a uh, corner kick 
as uh, the referee just uh, having a very quick word. It wasn't a long word, but just he just said a few words there to uh, Callum Connolly, the Blackpool captain. May well be that he was just telling him that uh, a couple of the Blackpool players were complaining a bit too much about that uh, penalty or free kick that wasn't given in uh, favour of Sonny Carey. Just telling the... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, telling the captain to perhaps calm his uh, teammates down, but it's a corner kick to Burnley. It's taken half an hour for them to get there first. Whipped in towards the near post. A couple of uh, players hit the deck. No free kick, no penalty. It's uh, back out on the right-hand side here now. Connor Roberts. What about uh, crossing it first time? Just holds it up in the end and goes back towards uh, uh, Zauri. Matinho now. Over to Goodmanson. Zauri again on the uh, left-hand side. Cross coming in. Thompson, I think the referee, uh, with the assistance of the assistant, has uh, stopped play there. And I think that was right because it looked to me as though there was a bit of a shove in the back there from uh, Ashley Barnes on Dominic Thompson. I'm not sure if that's what's uh, been given as the free kick. It, it may have been an offside, but we're going to see, finally going to see a replay here. When Sonny Carey got towards the edge of the area, was he brought down as he, brought into the, as he went into the box? Or was it Ekdal just standing his ground? This is one of those where... It's always a 50-50 in the referee's mind as to whether it's the uh, attacking player playing the ball into space and then just trying to draw the free kick, or is it actually the defender deliberately obstructing him? I think on that occasion, I've got to say that Ekdal probably does get away with it because he doesn't just get his body in the way. There's an arm across there from the uh, s a Swedish defender as well just to try and stop the run. So I think there is an argument there from... Uh, uh, from Carey, although it wasn't a penalty, it was still outside the box in any case, but it would have been a free kick right at the uh, edge of the area. Another goal in the championship to tell you about. Uh, Coventry City, where the Gia Kedesh have uh, taken the lead away at uh, Huddersfield Town. Great story, isn't it? I mean, Mick McCarthy, old experienced uh, manager. I'm sure he won't mind me uh, giving him that sort of title here at uh, Bloomfield Road. But then you look at uh, Neil Warnock, as I say... I will never believe that Neil Warnock's a retired from management. There's always going to be that one job. He's got uh, so much history with so many clubs now, and Huddersfield Town being one of them, that it's, it's no surprise that he's been lured back into management. Albeit uh, he's finding it uh, pretty difficult at the moment, Huddersfield down by a goal to nil. And uh, looking at the live table as it stands, Huddersfield would be uh, eight, seven points adrift. Uh, Blackpool currently, if, if, this, if they were to hold on to this draw, they would be six points adrift of uh, Cardiff City. Uh, who, who had needed that to win earlier today against uh, Bristol City. 32 minutes gone here, unofficial under, uh, independent off-tube studio commentary. It is uh, Blackpool nil, Burnley nil. No change. And in fact, there has been a change in the other in the other games. It's uh, Tom Bradshaw has given uh, Millwall the lead against uh, Norwich City. So the goals are starting to trickle in in the championship now. Here come Burnley with Nathan Teller down the right-hand side. He drills across in this time, which is flicked away by Thornley. And it's uh, great work there from Josh Bowler. Dribbling his way out of trouble at the edge of his own box. And he's off at now down the right-hand side. Ebola just uh, by sheer weight of numbers. Vitinho is able to dispossess him. But that's good work uh, to then win the ball back here. Jerry Yates then getting his body in the way. Winning the free kick. Taking it very quickly. Almost uh, too quickly here. Luke Garbutt wasn't quite ready for it. But he does uh, hold it up here. And uh, plays it back towards uh, Jordan Lawrence Gabriel. And that's a bit of a miscued pass uh, from Lawrence Gabriel down the uh, right-hand side. Out for a uh, throw to uh, Burnley. So as I say, uh, Mick McCarthy's side perhaps have uh, weathered the, the sort of the early storm here from uh, Burnley, but they're still not really able to, to get on the ball very often. You, you, Blackpool's best chances to go forward in this game have almost all come from uh, counter-attacks. They've not really had any kind of position play where they've been able to build from the back or even try a, a long ball to try and hold it up. It's all been counter-attacks, really, for uh, Mick McCarthy's side. In fairness, though, Burnley haven't had too much uh, sort of intense possession in front of the uh, the Blackpool box. As I say, it took 29 and a half minutes uh, for Burnley to get their first corner kick in this game. It's uh, down the right-hand side here for... Uh, well, just about kept in play here by Twine. In fact, it wasn't. Scott Twine has uh, been given some hospital passes since he's come on the field here, the uh, Burnley number 11. And that was a pass that he had no chance of getting on the end of, really. Out for a uh, throw to Blackpool down the left-hand side. Thompson there fighting, and Thompson uh, fouled there by Nathan Tellup, says our referee. So, little, little uh, snippets, little nuggets of possession here now for Blackpool inside the Burnley half. I mean, this really is only just inside the Burnley half. We're only about... Uh, 10 yards away from the halfway line here, but it does mean that at least Blackpool have a set piece. They can think about either setting it up or getting a ball into the box, sending a couple of players further forward. Burnley have set up at the edge of the area with their uh, offside line. It's going to be the left foot of Luke Garbutt to uh, try and whip this in 
uh, from this uh, left-hand side. He puts a lot of height on this one as well. Aims at the edge of the six-yard box. It's cleared away. Drops here to a bowler. Bowler feeds a ball in. Yates with the strike. Goes Connolly with the strike in the end. In fact, there's an offside. Captain uh, Callum Connolly was in an offside position. Burnley pushing forward and getting that offside just right as soon as the uh, free kick was uh, taken. The initial ball was cleared. Yeah, that's good work. You can see that uh, as soon as that ball was played into Connolly, that Burnley defensive line had moved forward as one. And uh, everything was uh, absolutely uh, as uh, Vincent Company would have liked there. Now it's uh, with Vitinho down the uh, left-hand side. Plays it into uh, Bayer. Bayer with a good run down the uh, left, heading towards the halfway line. He's brought down. And that's been given as a uh, free kick. Sonny Carey's now having a go at the linesman. The referee's having a go at the black ball captain here. Callum Connolly just getting him to uh, calm down a little bit. I think it um, looked to me like the point that uh, Carey was making was that the obstruction he was just done for was a very similar obstruction that he felt he should have been awarded uh, earlier in the game. Players are always going to remind the officials of that if they feel as though a decision has uh, gone against them. So the ball now back. No shots on target yet. They're not spoiling us in this game so far, the two sides. As uh, second from bottom taking on top of the league. You would imagine that we would have seen a goal of some sort, uh, or at least an effort on target. But it's been one of those games that it's been played at a decent pace. It's enjoyable to watch, but uh, we're just missing that uh, action in the final third, really. Here come uh, Burnley again, trying to change that. Scott Twine switching play from right to left to pick out Anna Zaruri. He's got uh, options here at the edge of the area, but in the end, he plays a pass to no one at all. He's just lucky there was nobody tracking back there from Blackpool, and this loose ball can still be kept alive here by uh, Connor Roberts. Gets that ball into Zaruri, ran into the box. His uh, attempted pass, though, is uh, cleared away by Thornley up towards the halfway line. Headed down by Ekdal, back to uh, Roberts, down the right-hand side. Here's Nathan Teller, back to uh, Connor Roberts again. Square now to uh, Josh Cullen. And Teller on the overlap here, down the right-hand side, being closed down by Dominic Thompson. Back to Cullen. G Goodmanson wanted an early ball in the box. Cullen prefers to clip, to clip across into the six-yard box. He was aiming for Ashley Barnes, but uh, goalkeeper Chris Maxwell uh, comes up. And uh, the Welshman makes a uh, comfortable save there in the end. Absolutely uh, no problems for him there. And uh, Blackpool play out from the back this time. Ball over the top here from Curtis Nelson. But let's see, that kind of thing is going to infuriate Mick McCarthy. If they're going to go to all that trouble to uh, try and hold the ball up, trying to uh, stifle what Burnley are doing, and then literally two passes, two touches after their goalkeeper catches the ball. It's just a long shank from... Uh, Curtis Nelson that goes straight out for a uh, throw to Burnley and uh, straight away inviting more pressure here from the league leader. So that kind of thing will not uh, impress Mick McCarthy at all. And uh, as I say, he'll be pleased with the way his side have been organised and, and have done what they can to try and stop Burnley. It may well be that he'd like to see his side maybe do just that little bit more in terms of actually creating a chance for themselves. The pass from Roberts down the right is uh, easily dealt with now and pushing forward is uh, Luke Garbutt running straight into Goodmanson leaves the ball now for Kenny Dougal and he plays it back towards uh, Curtis Nelson Nelson to Thornley back to uh, goalkeeper Maxwell who sends a long ball up towards the halfway line doesn't quite uh, reach Josh Bowler Burnley up positional that's a poor touch from Zauri and then it's a poor pass from uh, Callum Connolly uh, these uh, mistakes are becoming infectious now both sides are starting to give the ball away a little bit too easily it's uh, Vincent Company there, just getting another message out to his players. They're getting word of an equaliser at uh, the new den between Millwall and Norwich. I'll confirm that uh, in just a moment. Can't see there being any other goals uh, in the uh, championship score. Just recently confirmation now that Norwich have got their equaliser away at uh, Millwall. Just waiting for a confirmation of the uh, goal scorer in that game. But uh, still goalless here in the game between uh, Blackpool and Burnley. Still goalless between Luton and Swansea as it is between Sunderland and Stoke. Uh, Watford against uh, Preston. No goals in any of those uh, games so far. And of course, uh, there is going to be a little bit of uh, extra spice in the uh, game between uh, Sunderland and Stoke City, of course, with the uh, former Sunderland manager Alex Neal making his uh, way back to the set Stadium of Light. I mean, in fairness, Alex Neal has actually managed to get something out of Stoke City when you consider just how... Uh, how in trouble they looked at one point this season. I mean, they're still not completely out of relegation trouble, but they currently sit uh, nine points clear of the drop. So you would imagine that uh, at this stage, 
They'll feel as though they're in a position where it's in their hands to try and uh, make sure they can get away from a relegation trouble. Still a couple of uh, goalless games in the Premier League as well. Chelsea against Leeds and Wolves against Spurs are still goalless. And it's still Arsenal nil, Bournemouth 1. As it is uh, Aston Villa 1, Crystal Palace nil. And so that goal for uh, Villa has been accredited as uh, Joachim Anderson's own goal. And uh, Brighton still lead against West Ham by a goal to nil. Southampton against Leicester is the uh, late game in the Premier League. The team that is available on our service. But uh, back to action here at uh, Bloomfield Road. Not missed anything in the meantime. It's just been Burnley in uh, steady possession here in midfield. With, uh, the ball now played back uh, towards their own penalty area. A bit of uh, pressure here now for Connor Roberts, but he deals with it and then plays the ball out to uh, Scott Twine down the right-hand side. Some space here for Twine now heading towards the edge of the area. Plays it to square now for uh, Cullen. Cullen towards Barnes. Barnes to Goodmanson who goes for the shot and it's uh, just wide there from Goodmanson. It's a, a decent effort there with uh, a great save as well from uh, Chris Maxwell. Looked to me initially as though the uh, effort from Goodmanson was heading into the top corner, but uh, the goalkeeper does get a one hat. It's a really good save in the end uh, from Maxwell just to uh, palm it round the post. That's uh, certainly the best effort we've had on goal in this game. And uh, it's the Icelander, Johan Berg Goodmanson, with the effort. Set himself. It's a really good left footed strike. He's got a great left foot, uh, Goodmanson, but that's a really good one handed save there from Maxwell. Saw it all the way. Make sure it was uh, palmed away from goal. Corner kick now to Burnley on the uh, left hand side. The try a much flatter cross aimed at the near post. That wasn't a good option. Easily dealt with by the home side. Cleared up towards the halfway line where uh, Vitinho had stayed as the uh, last man back. And then the ball played back towards uh, the goalkeeper, Muric. Space now down the uh, left-hand side, although uh, Vitinho's first thought was to play it square to uh, Bayer. And then out towards uh, Cullen on the right-hand side. Goals flying in elsewhere in the uh, championship. Luton now lead against uh, Swansea uh, by a goal to nil. And Stoke have just taken the lead away at uh, Sunderland as well. So uh, it's, uh, it's just us and Watford now. Uh, Blackpool against Burnley and Watford against Preston are the only two games in the championship which are uh, still goalless. As Zauri's run towards the edge of the area is stopped by... Uh, that's good work there in the end from uh, Gabriel. And uh, he's able to uh, put that out for a uh, corner kick. So more pressure here from Burnley now in the uh, late stages of this uh, first half. Blackpool getting everybody back here for this one. It's going to be the substitute to Scott Twine to uh, take the corner kick. Looking for uh, options here. Twine gets a bit more height on this one. It's headed towards goal. It was Barnes's effort. Stopped at the edge of the six-yard box. Second ball back into the box. Uh, slammed away now. Long clearance there from Dominic Thompson up towards the uh, halfway line. And uh, Burnley now back in possession down the right-hand side with uh, Connor Roberts switching play. From right to left, he's asking an awful lot of Zauri there. He's asking too much of uh, his teammate. It's not going to be kept in play, and that is out for a uh, throw to uh, Blackpool now down the right-hand side. The other recipient of that long ball from Roberts could have been Twine, but again, it was far too far away from him. He's, uh, not, been, uh, he's not been blessed with uh, great service from his teammates so far. Here's Scott Twine. Three or four times he's had to uh, chase after passes that were never really uh, anywhere near him. Thrown out to be taken by uh, Jordan Gabriel. It's a bit of height on this one. Trying to head it on there was Bowler. It's cleared, but then a loose ball. is still bouncing in front of the Burnley box. That one was chased all the way to the edge of the area by uh, Bowler. It's out for a uh, throw to uh, Blackpool now down the right-hand side. 90 seconds to go in this first half. I expect we'll get a couple of minutes of injury time at least. Uh, mainly for that uh, injury to uh, Josh Brownhill. Just joined our uh, commentary. Josh Brown, who had to go off with an injury. After what appeared to be... Uh, he looked like he jarred his knee as he was trying to get uh, some balance on the pitch. And he just uh, lost his feet in the turf. Replaced by uh, Scott Twine on uh, 25 minutes. Uh, so it looks like we're going to get our first uh, booking of the afternoon. It was uh, Blackpool captain uh, Callum Connolly who just uh, grabbed the shirt of uh, Goodmanson. It was actually his heavy touch. He gave the ball away and then realised that he may have to take one for the team there after his mistake. And so it is a, a yellow card for uh, Callum Connolly. And uh, Burnley back in possession now with a minute to go before we hit uh, the interval, before we hit injury time. 
Sorensen. Just to tell you, those goal scorers in those uh, last few games that I mentioned, it was uh, Sorensen that said, uh, got the equaliser for Norwich away at Millwall. That was after Bradshaw had uh, given Millwall the lead. And the Stoke scorer was uh, Laurent from a uh, small bone pass. So a Stoke lead away at uh, Sunderland uh, just before half time. There is here come Burnley now with uh, Cullen going out towards the uh, left-hand side here for Zauri, getting towards the edge of the area, lifts that ball in, it's a header towards goal, but it's straight at the goalkeeper from Nathan Teller. It was a glancing header, didn't put too much power behind it, and even if he did, it was straight down the middle. I uh, don't think there'd be any way that uh, Maxwell could let that one in, really. It always looked as though the goalkeeper was going to get himself into position in time. And uh, waiting now to uh, clear this one is uh, Chris Maxwell. Also waiting to see our uh, fourth official uh, this afternoon, Mr. Gill, to see exactly how much uh, time we're going to get. It's just a one minute. So, uh, as I say, they could, probably could have uh, given that uh, as two minutes, really, for the amount of time that we lost for that injury. But that pretty much has been the only stoppage we've had in the first half. And uh, is there enough time here for Burnley to try one more attack, maybe? They're going through the middle now with the Cullen. Back in towards uh, Yalmar Ekdal. Square to uh, Bayer to uh, Ekdal, looking for uh, options left and right, plays it to Roberts, Roberts couldn't quite control that, but it's still kept in play here by uh, Nathan Teller, Roberts now back towards uh, Ekdal inside his own half, being closed down by Yates, and uh, overall I think Vincent Company he won't be disappointed with his players, I don't think too disappointed, because he'd say that his players have been in control of this uh, first half, what, um, what he would say is that perhaps they're just missing that little bit of something in terms of the final third, Bit of a complaint here from Blackpool as well as Goodmanson goes in quite hard on Callum Connolly. It is a free kick to Blackpool. The referee was never in doubt about that. But I think the uh, Blackpool players saying potentially it could be a booking here for... Uh, I'm not so sure if that was a booking for Goodmanson, really. Connolly still needing a moment to pick himself. This is way, this is way over the minute we, we're supposed to have now at the end of this first half. So really, the referee could actually uh, end uh, the first half now if he wanted to. But I think he's just going to allow the uh, Blackpool captain to uh, get some treatment first. And uh, for the time being, this uh, first half uh, continues. First half time of the uh, three o'clock in the championship is at uh, Vicarage Road. Watford nil, Preston nil. That is a uh, half-time score. And uh, just waiting here to see whether or not... Uh, He's going to be able to carry on here, uh, Callum Connolly. It's also half-time at uh, the Riverside, where Middlesbrough lead against uh, Reading by two goals to nil. Juba Akpong from the uh, penalty spot. And then a, a second goal there from uh, the youngster, Aaron Ramsey, uh, getting the uh, second goal there for Middlesbrough. Also half-time uh, at... Uh, at uh, Stamford Bridge and at Villa Park. It's uh, Villa 1, Crystal Palace 0. It's Chelsea 0, Leeds 0. But in the meantime, the referee has decided that uh, we're not going to be able to play on anyway because of the amount of uh, time it's taken. And it was pretty much on the uh, the one minute of added time uh, when, uh, the when the captain went down. So it's half time here at uh, Bloomfield Road. It is goalless between uh, Blackpool and Burnley. And I'll be back in 15 minutes for second half of Tube Studio Commentary.